Hi, and welcome to my first of hopefully many videos in which I demonstrate and talk about my homebrew electronic projects. First of all, uh, I'd like to apologize for the audio quality. Uh, I'm not really set up for video creation at all. This is, this is my first video. Uh, and I shot it with my iPhone, which is duct taped to some kind of rig. And that's really the best I could do for now. Uh, but hopefully the content of this video uh, makes up for that. So today I'm going to show you uh, this beast that is right in front of me right now. Uh, it's the RGS 1000 and it stands for Ridiculous Game System 1000. It, it has that name because it just looks ridiculously cool on a, on a shelf or cabinet. And before going into detail, uh, let me just show you what it does. So it's, it's a homebrew gaming cabinet that lets you play Snake and Tetris. Uh, there's a controller attached to it. Let me get it. Controller which has four buttons. Up, left, down and right. And in some occasions the up button also acts as start button. So I'll play some, some snake first. So this, this is the main menu. I can select which game I'd like to play. And in this occasion, the up button acts as start, so let's press start. And we're playing snake. So we, we grab our food, a snake grows and grows. Whoops. Until finally it gets too big and we die. So when the game's over, I can press start again to return back to the main menu. And this time I'll play some Tetris. So it's just good old Tetris, we all know it. And I built this thing because I, I thought it would be a great eye catcher in the living room. It just, uh, it, it immediate, immediately draws curiosity when someone sees it and uh, once you turn it on every everybody just wants to have a go at it so that just works the way uh, you expect let me just finish the game here show you how horrible i am at tetris and then um, once we press start again, we get back to the main menu. So that is it, the RGS 1000. Now let's have a look at uh, the cabinet and I'll explain uh, what I did to, uh, to make this. So the cabinet consists of laser cut plywood pieces that are three millimeters thick. And they're designed in such a way that everything slides together. Like those old dinosaur kits you used to get as a kid. All the horizontal pieces and four of the vertical pieces have hooks designed into them. The holes in place a semi-transparent sheet of acrylic in the front and a, an LED matrix in the back. So I designed this whole thing in Adobe Illustrator and had it laser cut through an online service. And actually the biggest mistake I made during this project was while ordering the laser cut parts. I had already ordered the parts for the controller earlier and uh, I used a dark plywood for this and I was supposed to use the same type for the cabinet but I ended up ordering the cabinet in plain plywood and as this is actually the most expensive part of the entire project I decided to just keep it like it is for now. My next project that I already started is, uh, is a CNC router so I can just do my own cutting in the future. So like I said, the controller also consists of uh, laser cut plywood pieces and contains a little circuit around uh, an input shift register. Now there's, there's only four buttons here, so I didn't really need that shift register in the end. But since I had some laying around and I never get to use them, I, I decided it would be a good exercise. The display is made up from an RGB LED matrix, which has 10 columns and uh, 20 rows. And it took quite some hours to solder this whole thing together and 
in the end, I um, I would have been much better off using pieces of uh, addressable RGB LED strip. But I really didn't do enough research before starting this project and I, I decided to go this way. It works, obviously, but I could have saved a lot of time uh, by just using LED strips. Now, let's take a look at the guts of this machine. Um, all the wires coming from the LED matrix are going into this box that supports the frame and holds the PCB. Now there are 50 wires in total. I'm, uh, I'm using common anode RGB LEDs and the anodes are used for the rows. So there are 20 wires for the rows and there are 10 wires for the columns, for each color. So 30 columns, column wires in total. Uh, they're connected to this PCB using uh, PCB headers. Also on the PCB are 20 transistors. You can't really see them because they're behind the header and they are used for, uh, for the rows and a total of nine shift registers. Seven of those shift registers are used to drive the rows and columns and two of the shift registers are currently not in use and are connected to this GPO general purpose output header which uh, I can use for future implementations such as digits for, uh, for scoring. And uh, last but not least, the heart of the machine, an Arduino Nano. And I've also laid out some additional tracks here and on the other side that uh, connect to the uh, Arduino pins. And they could be used for, uh, for expansion uh, later on. As for the software that's on this Arduino, I'm not going to go into much detail about it. It's, uh, it's around 1200 lines of C++ code. And really, it's, it's not at all optimized in any way. I just started coding during early prototyping, uh, added some stuff along the way. And as of now, I'm really running into uh, RAM limits. If I want to add more features, I would have to really optimize the code before I can do anything else. And, and honestly, I kind of ran out of steam on this one. Uh, the thing works, it's, it's playable, it looks cool. So as far as I'm concerned, it's time to move on to the next project. I want to thank you all for watching my first video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to stay updated on future videos. And if you have any comments, tips, suggestions or questions, just leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think about this project. And I'll do my best to answer any questions you guys have. Thanks again for watching and catch you next time.